Some call it insight. Others call it vision. At Pershing, we call it perspective. A perspective you'll benefit from, from a custodian you can rely on. One who can help navigate the big picture and whose products give you a competitive edge. One who considers everything. What will help you succeed today and tomorrow? Open yourself to a new perspective and open the possibilities. Consider everything. BNY Mellon Pershing. Learn more at pershing.com slash RIA. Pershing Advisor Solutions, LLC. Member FINRA SIPC. Welcome to the Oh Hell No podcast, where I, Keisha Nicole, delivers a daily dose of passion, purpose, and struggle by interviewing people who are living their best life doing what they love. Here on this podcast, every Oh Hell No moment serves a purpose. Now let's get started with the show. All right, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Oh Hell No podcast. Um, I have a special guest. Welcome, Carla Williams Johnson, all the way from Trinidad. Welcome. Thanks so much for having me. No problem. So Carla is a media marketing consultant. She's an entrepreneur and she's the founder and CEO of Carly Communications. She has worked with Unilever, Moo, Kiss, Burger King, just to name a few. So she is well seasoned in this industry and I'm very excited to speak (laughs) to her tonight. (laughs) Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So let me ask you, how many jobs did you have before you found your calling for marketing? Oh my God, a lot. (laughs) (laughs) A a lot. Um, I would probably say upwards of 10. Most of it being in the advertising industry Mm -hmm. where we had different ad agencies. So McCann, Lonsdale, Inglefield, Ogilvy. So a lot of my nine to five was working with agencies, working with big businesses like Coca-Cola, Unilever, Nestle, and all of these places. So before I decided to hop on on my own, I was very versed in the field of marketing and communications based on my my life at the agencies. So you always knew that you loved marketing and you Mm -hmm. went straight into that after school and pursued that as a career. Excited. Great. <laughs> so is there anything that you hated to do in past positions that you are now glad that you learned to do because you are using that skill today in your business? Okay, so to answer that question, one of the things that I had to learn by force to do was to interact with people. Because when I first started in advertising, media was more behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So we never really interacted with people unless they worked at the agency. So when we had brainstorming meetings and stuff like that. But then when when media started to get out of its shell and become more important or as important as creative we had to start interacting with clients and start going to client meetings. And it's one of the things that I was resistant to because I never really had to do it. But I'm happy that I learned how to do it because now that's exactly what I have to do. I have to interact with customers. I have to understand their needs. I have to understand what they say and what they don't say and what they actually mean. So I'm very happy that I got myself out of the shell back then so I can use it in my business now. Yes. And I I like to ask that question sometimes to my guests because I've found in work that there's always something that is a tedious th- task that you hate to do or just something that you it just makes you so nervous or uncomfortable. And then later on, you're like, oh, now it all makes sense. <laughs> like, this is why I was doing that, even though I hate it. Right. So I just like to have that that moment. Have you guys identify that moment for yourselves? So when you started your communication business, how long was it before you were able to make a profit as an entrepreneur? I would say my first year in business was pretty crazy. When I stepped out, it was 2016, Mm -hmm. um, early 2016, actually. And I went out there with the intention of taking the world by storm and the world turned around and hit me in the back (laughs) because... It was like, who is Carly Communications? Where did she come from? Why is she here? You know, so 
one of the things that I learned very early on was even though I was a marketer, I was so hell-bent on trying to get people to notice me and to see me and to take me seriously. And I forego the whole finding your ideal client. I just wanted to talk to as many people as possible, but I went, I totally disregarded, oh no, Carl, you need to find your ideal client. So when I first started, I was just out there putting things out there, doing things, the videos, the lives, everything, but there was no real strategy behind it. Or if you want to call desperation a strategy, there was a lot of desperation behind it because I just wanted so bad for people to know who I was. And then I had to say, you know what, Carla, this is this is not marketing. This is not what you were trained to do. And this is not what you tell people to do. So I would say maybe December of that year, I took a step back and tried to figure out, okay, Carla, who is your ideal client? Who it is that you want to be talking to? What it is are you actually selling? And, you know, try to be a little bit more cohesive with your communication. And once I did that in December, I would say by... February of 20, 2017, which was what, two or three months later, well, two and a half months later, then things started to roll through. Then I was booking clients. Then I was starting to see a profit. So a lot of the delay was on my part, not doing the groundwork. I think if I had done that a little earlier, I may have been making profits a little earlier. Mm-hmm. But I mean, Nothing before it's time, right? Right. We all have to go through our motions. We all have to make our mistakes. And we all have to learn from the mistakes and move forward. Yep, absolutely. The trials and tribulations of business. Mm -hmm. What would you say was the one thing you did that really put your name out there? So after you got your communication, you know, planned together and you said, okay, I'm going to get my target audience. Like, what was that one thing that really set you into motion? I think once I decided that PR and publicity was the thing for me, that I think put everything in motion because I was doing a lot of social media. I'm not, in as much as I know how to use social media, I don't depend on it because I understand it's just a tool to use to reach your customer. Um, I was doing a lot of direct marketing. I was doing all different things. But once I really decided to do PR and publicity, you know, contact the newspapers, contact the radio station, contact the magazines. That was the turning point for me because little did I know that there were people looking at me, there were people watching me, there were people saying, hey, this girl is doing something. And I got an email from Huffington Post at the time they were doing the 99 Limit Breaking Female Founders. And I made the list. I believe I was the only West Indian, if memory serves me, on the list. And that was end of 2017 into 2018. So I think for me, once I decided to put myself out there outside of social media is when things really started to turn around. Wow, that's nice. Congratulations on that back then. <laughs> still still a nice, you know, recognition. So who or what empowered you to pursue your dreams? So you had this dream of going into communications and you just went for it. What do you think was the thing that made you feel confident about saying, this is what I want and I'm going to do it. I don't care what anybody says. That is a very good question. What did inspire me? I think I just knew. I did. Well, No, let me backtrack. I didn't know. I I honestly didn't know how good I was. People would tell me all the time, you know, you need to open your own business. You're very good. You're very, you have a very creative mind. You're very good at media. But I didn't see that in myself. And I think that's a lot of, I think that's the issue a lot of us have. You know, people see things in us that we don't see in ourselves. And then when I stepped out on my own, you know, I still had to kind of find my foot in. But I just knew that I liked advertising. I just knew I liked marketing. I knew I liked commercials. Even when I was a little child growing up, I used to like to watch commercials or maybe um, look at the the magazines and see how they would do the ads in the magazine and how the magazine would be targeting. Before I even knew the term target, obviously, would target different segments and stuff like that. So I always knew I wanted to be in advertising. But I think once I was forced to step out on my own and that decision was made for me, 
that I had no choice but to fall back on what I knew and what I was passionate about. Oh, wait. So when you started your own business, this wasn't you leaving a job. You something happened. Well, here's the story. <laughs> so this is the story, right? Yes. I was looking for this company that was just terrible, mm-hmm. right? It was like terrible. I was I was working my little skin off nine to five, sometimes a lot of overtime. And I wasn't appreciated. It was making me sick. The people were sickening. And I remembered I was, I had, I took like a month off because I was really sick. And I remember going to work and I remember saying to myself, I'm leaving. When I get to work, that's it. I'm leaving. I'm resigning. I can't deal with this anymore. And when I got to the office, HR called me before I even put my bad down. HR called me and said, well, I'm so sorry. (laughs) Your position has become redundant. Now, I was very happy. Don't get me wrong. I was happy. I was shocked and surprised, but I was happy because it was like validation. It's like, okay, I said this morning I needed to leave. And a couple hours later, I'm being let go. Great. But I didn't have a plan. I knew what I wanted, but I didn't have a plan. Mm -hmm. Right. But I was forced to have a plan really quick because at the time I had one daughter. I have two children now, but I had one daughter and she was still going to school. She was um, in secondary school, what we call secondary school here, and she had exams coming up. So in that respect, I was forced to have a plan right away. Hence the previous question when you asked about, you know, when I told you about the desperation, I just wanted to build myself and wanted people to know about me so bad that I threw strategy out the window. Mm. But once everything settled, and amazingly enough, it was around her birthday because her birthday is in December. It was around her birthday that I decided, you know what, it's time to put a strategy in place and let me move forward. And the rest is history. Yeah, I love that. (laughs) I love when we're forced out to like, go to that next chapter, you know, because sometimes we know when we need to move, but we're so nervous because we have responsibilities yeah. and you have things and you're like, I, I just can't leave. But God says you're leaving today. <laughs> like, so, right. I love that. So have you ever had a client that you wanted to fire, but you yeah. stuck it through and got the job done for the sake of your reputation or <laughs> the contract? Short answer, yes. I think we all have had clients that we want to fire. (laughs) And we've all had clients that, you know, we stuck it through for one reason or the other. Maybe it was loyalty. Maybe they were paying the bills at the time. There's a lot of reasons why we stick it out. And honestly, I have had wanted to fire clients and I did stick it out. And I'm proud of myself because you learn a lot, right? You learn patience, something I never never had Mm -hmm. you learn you know to handle situations and you also learn what type of client you don't want to work with in the future so when you see them coming you could like go in the opposite direction right absolutely (laughs) so I'm happy that I stuck it out so okay you know what I'm proud of myself I did this but this is another story to tell so I know okay I can't deal with this anymore let me let me deal with something else. So it's all good. Okay. So what do you think most marketing professionals oversell and under deliver? Mm, oversell. I think a lot of people, a lot of marketers oversell their abilities. There are a lot of marketers out here and they talk really, really good. Mm-hmm. And when it, it's time to deliver, they can't do it. And I think, there's a misconception that marketers don't tell the truth, you know, that we're liars. But it's not, I think that there are some people who are like that. They have a general idea of what should be done, mm-hmm. but they have no clue how to do it. So when you actually hire them, they're not sure what are the steps that need to be taken, what are the things that need to be done, what are the the, the things that you need to put in place. So then... When you have a client who is looking for you for guidance, you know, you can't deliver because you can't even articulate to them what are the things that they should be doing and why. So I think a lot of marketers out here, they just have the gift of God, as we say here. They have the gift of God, but they don't know how to actually execute the things that they're telling you that you need to do. 
Right. Yep. So I guess people, if you're looking for a marketing expert and they have this great plan, but they can't lay it out and tell you step yeah. by step how you're going to achieve it and why you need to do th- these things, then that's a clue that mm, maybe they're not so good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How do you market yourself in a way that is authentic to you and who you are? I tell my story every chance I get because my story is the reason why I'm here. It's the reason why I do what I do. It's the reason why I connect with the people that I connect with. So wherever I get a chance to share my story, I do. whether it's social media, whether it's online, whether it's a podcast, a blog, a feature, a TV interview, whatever, because I want people to know this is where I came from. This is why I'm in business. And this is why you need to trust me. There are a lot of people out here, as we mentioned before, they're touting themselves as experts, right? And they have an internet connection and a laptop or a phone. And they're just posting on social media, hey, I can do this, I can do that. But when you really look into their background and look into their story, they have nothing to back it up. And I'm not talking qualifications here or a certificate. I'm talking about real life experiences, real world results, real people that they've helped. They don't have that, right? And that's what I want people to know, that I am the person that can give you real world results based on the people that I have actually helped and guided and given advice to whether it was for free or not. So that's what I try to do. I always try to share my story and real world examples. Yeah. And that, that, that makes a difference. I had an experience where I was going to hire this company to do something for me. They were really expensive. I mean, expensive, (laughs) expensive, right? So I could not afford it anyway. And they had this person on one of their testimonials that talked about what a great job they did and blah, blah, blah. And I reached out to the person, um, you know, in direct message, like, hey, I saw that you, you know, you did this testimonial, you know, did this company really help you? And I'm still waiting for this person to respond. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm the type of person that if I use a company or something and it works for me, I'm telling everybody. I want everybody to know, right? Because I want everybody to go to this person and get the help that yeah. I got, right? So if yeah. you receive this help, why wouldn't you respond to like a quick DM and just be like, yes, it was amazing or, you know, anything. So that, that right there is a red flag, right? right? So you can only imagine who was that person that left this positive review, mm-hmm. right? Whether it's a family member or someone that they paid because that happened. A lot of people out here are paying for followers, paying for likes, paying yeah. for comments, just to show, to fool people into thinking that, you know, that they are what they hope that they want people to think that they are. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you how many emails I get daily from people trying to sell me likes and comments. Right. Daily, yeah, right? I get that And there too. are people who fall for that. And I rather have a small community of trustworthy people that are paying for my services rather than have thousands and thousands of people, you know, like for like, follow for follow, leaving false, um, leaving false um, reviews and stuff. Like yeah. that does nothing for, for anyone. It does nothing for anyone. No, it really doesn't. It's a waste of your money. So it is. So what keeps you up at night as an entrepreneur? Well, I was going to say my son. But that's not- <laughs> no. <laughs> I think, you see, I, I think of my clients like family, mm-hmm. right? So if I don't get something done or if I feel like a little overwhelmed because I have so much to do and I'm trying to make everyone happy, that keeps me up. So like tonight, I already know it's a 3 a.m. kind of day, 3 a.m. and Coca-Cola kind of day because I have to get all of these things done for all my clients because I don't like to let people down. I don't like to over-promise and under-deliver and I don't want my clients to not succeed. And if that means I have to put in the extra hours to make sure that their strategy is on point, that their content is on point, that their PR is on point, I need to do that. If not, then I really can't sleep when the night comes. 
Yeah, I could just imagine. It's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> I always tell my um, listeners this. I worked in PR for one year. And I, at one point, I thought that that was, you know, what I was supposed to do with my life. And I went back to school. I got a master's in communications. And I'm doing this PR thing. It was the worst experience of my life. <laughs> The worst. I mean, I don't think I was horrible at it, but it just made me realize that this is not for me. This is not what I want to do. And mm -mm. I mean, the people were horrible, but it it was a lot. (laughs) For me, I think it was the opposite. I started with marketing and I didn't even know I was good at PR. I, I absolutely didn't know. And then even though people were seeing me and calling me and I was being interviewed and all of these things, I didn't know that getting featured was a difficult thing yeah. until I met people who said, oh, how did you do that? I'm trying for so many months to get published. How did you get published in just a couple of weeks? And I'm like, well, it's easy. You just send a proposal. What's a proposal? Right. And that's how I fell into PR, right? I literally fell into PR. And I think it's just like, my knowledge of marketing, my knowledge of being in media, I know how the media thinks. It's very easy for me to do a proposal and send it. But I didn't realize that other people didn't know how to do that. So here I am being featured here, there, and everywhere, right? And everybody's admiring me from afar, wishing that they could do it. And I'm like, well, it's easy. Let me show you how to do it. And the few people that I've done it for were published in just a matter of days. And I actually have... A client right now, she tells everybody I'm her her sister. She's from (laughs) St. Louis, Missouri. Mm -hmm. And she tells everyone I'm her sister from Trinidad, right? (laughs) And I'm her publicist. When we met, she was trying for over, I think it was a year or a year and a half to get published. Mm -hmm. And as we sat down and I showed her how to do the the, the proposal and the pitch and, and how to send it and what to look for, she was published in a week. Wow. She couldn't believe it. She called me screaming in my head. She's like, oh, my God. And it was like a top a top media house in her industry because she does relationship coaching and stuff like that. It was a top media house in her industry. And she couldn't believe it. Wow. She literally couldn't believe it. She's like, why? She's like, I've been trying for so long. What did you do? I said, well, I just showed you how to do a pitch. <laughs> right. You have the skill that we don't and I have. No, I, I didn't know that it that it was a skill it's so weird I didn't know that I didn't know it was a skill and I didn't know that I had it yeah it's very weird I know that's the great thing about your you know God-given talents you know <laughs> so what do you wish every client had patience <laughs> I think, yeah, I think a lot of clients think that marketing is this miracle thing that if they put out this ad now and 10 seconds later, they'll get the sales. It'll work like that. It's built over time, especially yeah. now, you know, we're, in, we're very um, information driven now. The consumer is very information and very emotionally driven. So they want to know things. They want to know what you stand for. Just look at like the whole Black Lives Matter movement. Like people want to know where you stand before they invest with you, Mm -hmm. right? And it's something that you build over time. It's trust that you build over time that gives you the results that you need. Gone are the days of, you know, advertising where you just put this up and put up the price and the lowest price wins. Like, gone are those days. Those were back whenever. Now it's, what is the value I'm getting? Why should I invest with you? Who are you? Why are you even in business? Why should I care? These are the questions that need to be answered. And you can't answer all of them immediately. This is something that must be built over time. And if you have a proper strategy, I always say at least 90 days, right? Once you have a proper strategy in place, you will see, you know, likes turn into fans, fans turn into followers, and followers turn into buyers. And that's the process. Mm, That's very well explained. Yes. (laughs) What part of your job do you look forward to doing every day? I love strategizing. Really? I love it. I love to take a client from zero to 100 and like put all the pieces together. Okay, we're doing social media here and we're doing some PR here and we're going to look for sponsorship there. It's like I like to look at the big picture mm-hmm. and I literally would do that all day. I had a four hour meeting with a client today just doing that for the next six months Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And that makes me happy. And at the end of it, everybody is always, oh my God, I didn't think of it that way. Oh my God, that makes so much sense. Why weren't we doing this all the time? Why didn't we call Kali six months ago? (laughs) (laughs) That happens to be all the time. Right. But I really love strategizing, whether it's my own business or my client. I just love that. I love it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So what is the biggest mistake that most new business new business owners make with marketing? I think most business owners, they don't do the groundwork. Mm-hmm. They don't do the groundwork first, just like I did. Yeah. I found there's a lot of business owners, you know, you don't take the time to figure out who your customers are, who you are, why you're in business, what exactly do you sell? And I'm not just talking about, for example, like I'm a marketer. I'm not selling marketing. I'm selling the ability for you to be clear on what your specific next steps are so that you can reach your goals, right? That's what I'm selling. And a lot of people don't see it like that. They see what they're selling as their job description when that's not really true, right? So if you take the time to really do that wrong work, you save yourself a lot of headache later on because then you'll start to attract the right people. Then you'll be able to say the right things. You'll be able to do the right things and you'll be able to create the right packages to sell. So it is a little bit of a headache and it is a little bit of a drag to sit down and really think about things, mm-hmm. right? It is, I understand, even as a marketer, I totally understand because you just want to go. You feel right. like you're not doing anything. You just want to move forward. But um, it's really important to make that first step and just do the research, do the, the sitting down, thinking things through before you start to plan and start to do any marketing. Yeah, that's great advice. And it's true. When was the last time you followed your gut professionally and what did you avoid or what did you re- receive as a result of that? Listen to me. I learned the hard way that your gut never lies. Mm -hmm. And many times in the early days, I would just not follow my gut and always get myself in hot water. So now, before I do anything, before I even accept a client, my gut tells me if this is going to make sense or not. So I follow my gut literally every day. Every day, I'm very much um, a believer of If your spirit is Mm -hmm. telling you no, then it's no. No matter how fantastic it sounds, if your spirit is not aligned, if your values are not aligned, then it doesn't make any sense. Yes, don't do it. Listen to your intuition, people. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so in business, do you think it is what you know or who you know? I think it's a bit of both. I think it's a bit of both. It's what you know. Because that's going to take you far. Mm-hmm. Who you know is going to help you go a little further, right? But it's not, as, as we say in Trinidad, it's not who you know, but who knows you, right? Okay. So <laughs> that's what we say. It's not who you know, it's who knows you. Because you know a lot of people, right. but a lot of people don't necessarily know you. So if they are willing to help you and they'll be able to put their backing behind you, say, hey, this girl, she knows what she's talking about. You need to have a chat with her. That goes a long way. Okay. I like it. (laughs) (laughs) I like the saying (laughs) because it's true. You might be like, oh, I know all these people, but nobody don't know you. You trying to get in some (laughs) place and they're like, who are you? (laughs) You know? So yeah, that makes a difference. So what advice would you give to someone who is interested in working in marketing, who is like just starting college? Mm, I would say there's going to be a lot of things that you're going to learn which are all important because the foundation for marketing is always very important. But I also think that there is going to be a time where you would need to trust your gut. You, there will be a time where you will need to depend on your own knowledge, your own experience, your own way of doing things to help you propel yourself forward. So one of the things I always tell people is, you know, you somebody may tell you that your ideal client does this particular thing or or congregates in this particular area you need to find out if that's true and you need to find out if if it's worth it because your ideal client in as much as they may be doing a particular thing you don't know if they'll be in the frame of mind to listen to your message right COVID is a perfect example of that there are a lot of people that needed marketing help 
absolutely needed it because of the pandemic. But they weren't in the frame of mind to receive the message because at the time, things were like doom and gloom. No one knew what was going on. No one knew what, knew what was happening. So sometimes you just need to trust your own self and say, hey, let me do my own research. Let me see what my people are. Let me ask questions and allow your intuition to guide you into whatever decision that you need to make. Okay. What advice would you give to someone who is passionate about marketing but has been working in another field and wants to transition into this field? It depends on the field. (laughs) (laughs) I like marketing. Marketing is an action, you know, just do it type of profession. Mm -hmm. But the thing about marketing is that you have to just do it, but do it with a strategy. Otherwise, you just be going crazy. So if you are in another profession and you want to get into marketing, by all means, jump in head first. But just remember, whatever you do must have a plan behind it, must have a strategy behind it. And don't expect too much at once. Everything takes time. There will be long nights. There will be days that you will be crying. There will be days that you will make terrible mistakes, hopefully not expensive ones, but terrible mistakes. You just have to learn from it and move on. Okay. So do you feel like you are living a purpose-driven life with your work? I do. I actually do. I think I was I think there are very few people in the world that answer their calling. You know, people like Tyler Perry and Michael Jackson, like they live what they were good at. And I think I am one of the people, thankfully, through being forced out on her own, I think that I am doing exactly what it is I should be doing in life right now. The amount of people that I've helped, the amount of people that, that I didn't even know look out for me and follow me and listen to me religiously. I, someone actually messaged me and told me that I, I thought I was so weird, right? But it just validates that I'm doing good work and that makes me feel good. Yeah, that's nice. It's nice when people recognize your work and, and tell mm-hmm. you because a lot of times we don't realize, you know, that we're doing a good job or, you know, we're that's what we want to do, but... It's nice when people acknowledge it and let you yeah. know, you know. So this is the Oh Hell No podcast. So I always ask my guests to share an Oh Hell No moment that has taught them something or changed their perspective on something. And an Oh Hell No moment is a moment of shock or disbelief. It could be um, a positive thing or it could be a negative thing. So like you going into work and getting let go that day, that was kind of an oh hell no moment, but it was like a oh hell yes, because you were happy too. <laughs> <laughs> but just something that has happened in, you know, along your journey that maybe it stuck with you, whatever you took a, a lesson from it. I think I've had a lot of oh hell no moments, but the one that stands out to me the most that I think I will take to my grave with me is when I first first started out, I was recruited by my then marketing coach to work on a project that was supposed to take myself and the other persons who were working on the project take our businesses to the next level. I should have realized the red flag when I heard it to the next level. But, (laughs) you know, at the time, as I mentioned, strategy went out the window. Desperation was my strategy. Yeah. And we were used to do this project while she went off and built her business and opened a third business. And we weren't being paid for this, right? We weren't being paid. We were doing this on our free time, right? And... She expected us basically to drop what we were doing and work on this project. And even the person, because it was supposed to be an event. So even the person that we were supposed to bring now were making ridiculous demands, right? They wanted to be on the top of the landing page, her and her husband. And she made stupid statements like, um... Oh, let me don't get into it. But she was making <laughs> unreasonable statements. And right. Let's call it unreasonable statements. And I was like, I did not leave my nine to five job where these people were treating me so terribly to come and work for you for no money for you to be dictating my pace like this. 
Oh, hell no. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's not how this works, right? That's not how this works. And I told her, I said, you know, I, you and I have been friends for a long time. And I think that's what hurt the most because we, we were friends, right? Mm-hmm. But you can't go around doing this. You can't go around treating people like this. And this thing that you're doing is not making financial and logical sense, right? It's not making sense. And it was keep, it, it made me feel heavy. Again, this is one of the things that I didn't trust my gut about. I was feeling heavy. I was feeling upset. I was feeling angry. And eventually, I had to walk away from the project, right? As a matter of fact, I was dismissed. I was mm. dismissed from the project. And I wasn't upset about it. Needless to say, the project did not, you know, happen. I think she alienated a couple of people. And, I mean, I'm not going to go into the success or failures of other people, but she is, that particular incident showed me the type of person that she really was. So I would never not speak to her again. I would never dismiss her or pass her straight. But I'm not going to be doing any collaboration right. any time in the near future. Because you've shown me the type of person that you are, and I'm not about that life. Mm-hmm. I left that life a long time ago. Right. Right. And now I am I am living a life where I do have a strategy. I do have a plan. I do have a way that I have a focus that I'm moving forward. I'm not using desperation as my strategy anymore. So you can't now use my own talent and stuff against me and make stupid statements like next level, right? <laughs> and, I'll, and, and, and allow me to fall flat again. Right. Oh my God, I love that. Next level. <laughs> so I'll look out for that. If somebody tells me this is going to take you to the next level, I'm going to be like, oh my yeah. God. <laughs> That's right. red flag. You need to run away from that. Right. Well, it was such a pleasure having you on the podcast. I really enjoyed talking to you and I enjoy your point of view because it's very different from um, the other marketers that I've had come on the podcast. And I love that. That's why I don't ask people the same questions. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thank so, you for having me. Yes, it was amazing. So please tell us where we can um, get in touch with you, um, mm-hmm. your social media handles, your website, all of that stuff. Okay, so I am on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Kali Communications, C-A-R-L-I communications um, my website is www.kalimedia.com and if you are interested in a free consultation i offer free consultations to first time to all business owners actually especially during this pandemic time i know it's a time where people are on show and they want to they're not sure what they should be doing i can definitely help you with that and you can reach out to me either on social media or via my website or you can email me if that's better at Carla C-A-R-L-A at CarlyMedia.com C-A-R-L-I Media.com Awesome Come to CVS for immunity support. From hand wipes to vitamins that are third-party tested, plus free flu shots for the whole family. Visit CVS today. No-cost flu shots with most insurance. Restrictions apply. Visit cvs.com and cvs.com slash tested for details. Some call it insight. Others call it vision. At Pershing, we call it perspective. A perspective you'll benefit from, from a custodian you can rely on, one who can help navigate the big picture, and whose products give you a competitive edge, one who considers everything, What will help you succeed today and tomorrow? Open yourself to a new perspective and open the possibilities. Consider everything. BNY Mellon Pershing. Learn more at pershing.com slash RIA. Pershing Advisor Solutions, LLC. Member FINRA SIPC.